everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are talking about my favorite romance tropes. Valentine's Day, I wanted to talk about some of my favorite tropes in romance books. I know I've done my favorite romances before, and I had a lot of favorite romances this last year in 2023. Like, there was quite a few in my top list. And so when I was thinking about what I wanted to do this week, I don't think I've ever actually done favorite romance tropes. Uh, and the more that I've been on booktube and the more that I've read of things, I think I've slowly started to like actually narrow down my absolute favorite tropes. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some of the tropes that I have here, as well as giving you some examples that I've read recently that fit into this category that I've absolutely loved. Some of these examples fit into multiple categories because the more tropes that a romance book fits, the actually the more likely I am going to love it. So the first one I wanted to talk about is friends to lovers. I feel like this is one of the big tropes that I absolutely love. I really do love being able to experience them having a friendship first and then moving into the romance. This can happen in two different ways. I've seen books with friends to lovers where they were maybe like childhood friends first and they eventually do have a romance later. Or there's been books that I've read recently, especially one of the ones that I will mention in just a second, where we actually get to see the friendship develop. Like the book has them start with not knowing each other at all and we get to see that friendship develop first and then move into lovers. And I just really love the basis of having friendship first, especially with me being demisexual. I really personally need a like good strong connection with someone before I want it to move into the like sexual side and a lot of romances do have spicy scenes. I want that friends before the lovers. So. For examples of this, the first one I have is the one where I talked about where they like did not know each other beforehand and we actually got to see the development of the friends going into lovers. It's going to be role playing by Kathy Yardley. I just talked about this in a vlog that I did recently and I absolutely loved it. You really get that epitome of like friends to lovers relationship, slow burn sort of moving that way where you get to see every single thing develop. I loved it. A couple other examples that I have here are going to be New Adult by Timothy Janowski and The Plus One by Maisie Eddings. These are ones where the characters are already friends at the start of the book before they end up moving into the lovers aspect, the like actual romantic relationship aspect. New Adult has a slightly magical twist, so we do actually see this character in his 20s and then like he has stuff happen where he ends up as like a 13 going on 30 sort of situation where he ends up waking up in his 30s and his best friend is no longer his best friend and like we get to see how that sort of dynamic works uh, and then the plus one we do have these two characters who were friends as well as like her brother so it was like the trio of them when they were younger um, they're also sort of rivals but in a fun friendship way they sort of like to compete against each other and so again we got to see the friendship stuff first before it came into the lovers aspect. Another trope that I absolutely love that I think goes hand in hand with the friends to lovers is slow burn. The slower the burn, pretty much, the better for me. Like I absolutely want the sort of like pining and the development of the romance and being able to see that and I want it to be a little bit slower. Like I really love romance books that take at least half the book to then get into the actual building of the romance or like you see it slowly going and we don't get the full like romantic aspects until later in the book. So role playing that we talked about earlier by Kathleen Yardley is a perfect example of this because of the fact that we get to see the friendship building first. New adult also because we end up having our character come back in his 30s and like not know what's going on. There is a definite slow, slow romance buildup for this because he has other things going on. He has to refigure out what his friends and his family are doing and I really love that aspect of this story. And another one would be Wait For It by Mariana Zapata. Mariana Zapata is like the queen of slow burn romance. A lot of her stories are very slow to build up because it's more of like a contemporary story at first, but not only that, the actual romance buildup 
takes a while to get there like you really get to see the like small nuances of these relationships happen and wait for it currently is my favorite Mariana Zapata book so I had to mention it here another favorite trope one that like as soon as I hear that it's in a romance book I almost always want to read it is going to be fake dating there is something about the idea of like hey we need to fake our relationship to get something out of it for each other and then they slowly start to develop those feelings. I feel like fake dating usually comes hand in hand with like a slow burn because they're usually not in it knowing they're going to get that relationship out of it, like an actual relationship. They're in it for something else. And you get to see them realize that they have feelings for each other. And I eat that up. I love that so, so much. So I actually have quite a few here with this trope. One, is going to be the plus one by Maisie Eddings. So not only is this friends to lovers where they were friends previously, but she has recently broken up with her boyfriend. I think he like cheated on her or something and needs a date to her brother's wedding. And this guy just happens to be back in town for the brother's wedding, because again, friends and all that kind of stuff. But he also needs a date and they decide to fake date at the wedding and things happen from there and I just, I absolutely love this one. Another one we have here is Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This is going to be a male-male LGBTQ romance, and it's the same sort of thing. We have two characters that end up fake dating, and those relationship feelings slowly start to come in. This is another one that I absolutely love. Another fake dating one is Written in the Stars by Alexandria Bellaflor. This is going to be a sapphic romance, um, and basically these two women met to have a date, the first date went horribly wrong, but one of them wants to get her brother off of her back and says, no, it wasn't horrible. It was great. And we're actually going to go date again and again and again. And so the fake dating ensues. I really did like this one. It is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Um, and so that does have some elements of that through here as well. But the fake dating was perfect. We also have Well Matched by Jen DeLuca. This is the third book in the like Ren Fair series that she has of companion romance novels and this one does have fake dating. We have two characters who are sort of like friends by the time we get to this third book but it's not like exclusively friends to lovers but our two main characters need to fake date. I think he ends up needing a date to like a wedding or something and then she comes in to help and of course the fake dating goes longer than just like that one event and again I absolutely love that dynamic and so yeah. And another one that I have here is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. So this obviously is like a STEM novel. It was originally like Raylo fic. I don't go into any of that kind of stuff. Like I don't really know much about that, but I really did love the fake dating aspect to this one. There's just something about that trope. It's one of my absolute favorites. And then another trope that I feel like is almost the complete opposite, but has the same vibe to me of fake dating is the secret relationship trope. This is the one where people are dating, they are in love with each other, they know that they're meant to be together, but they're not telling other people for reasons. So for this one, I have a couple things here. We have the Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. So this is two characters. This is gonna be a male-male LGBTQ romance where one is like on a dating show and the other person is his handler. And the dating show has him with a bunch of women, but he's actually gay and ends up falling for his handler and they have to hide their relationship from the show because of that. I love this one. We also have Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. This is gonna be sapphic romance and it's gonna be like sisters, best friends sort of trope. Um, and I did like this one a lot because again, we have Delilah Green who's sort of an outcast and she ends up falling for her sister's best friend who is Claire, who is a single mom and is also bi. So even though she's had relationships with men in the past, she is very intrigued by Delilah and they're hiding it from Delilah's sister because she would not have approved of the situation, but also they're in town for the sister's wedding and so obviously don't want to take away the spotlight from her. So yes, again, secret relationship. And I think one that a lot of people probably know is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston because this is the president's son from the United States and the Prince of England. And they have to put on a like facade of being friends for the press because of a bad publicity thing that happened. Um, and instead realize that they have feelings for each other and they're hiding their relationship because of the fact that it's this whole like political thing. I really, again, like this one too. Now I have two more things that I wanted to talk about. These are not necessarily tropes, but they are things that if I find them in the romance books, 
I'm more likely to like them. The first one is going to be mental health topics. I have recently discovered, because a lot of the romances that I loved in 2023, have hard topics. But not only did they have hard topics, they had hard mental health topics where people had issues going on. And it was like this refreshing look into real life, realizing that like, yes, people can have relationships and romance even if they have these other things happening, anxiety or depression or PTSD. So um, I've been really enjoying those. So let me bring those out. One is going to be the charm offensive. So not only was this a secret relationship sort of plot, but both of our characters have some mental health issues going on. I really liked how it was handled in here. Um, one of our characters does have depression and is dealing with that. The other one has anxiety and OCD. And again, I just really liked how that was handled in here with the whole romance aspect as well. We also have the plus one. This one is showing up a lot because it was one of my top romances of last year. Um, and we do have the mental health here as well. Our female main character is like a child psychiatrist or psychologist. I can't remember exactly which one, but so she deals with this kind of stuff in her day-to-day -day life. And then our male character here is like a Doctors Without Borders type of situation. Um, and he actually ends up coming back to the States around this time with PTSD from not being able to like save everybody and like survivor's guilt and stuff like that. And they definitely, again, get into it. And I really love the fact that we have the romance, um, but the fact that they're in a relationship never negates the fact that he has PTSD. Like, it's not a, I'm in love, everything's fine now. Like, I really love that fact. We also have the Heartbreak Handshake by J.R. Hart. This is one that I haven't touched on as much, um, in this video at least, but it was another one of my top ones from last year. This is a romance where one of our characters has anxiety, the other one is autistic. I really love the representation for all of that as well. So yeah, again, if something is going to have harder topics, even though it is a romance, we know it has a happily ever after. Like, I do like having the discussions of those mental health issues, especially in the books. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on, again, not actually a trope, but if it has LGBTQ plus characters in it. I'm sure you've been able to tell by a lot of the recommendations that I've given out here that I have really been loving the books that are queer. Um, I know not all the romances that I read are going to be queer, but a lot of them are, and I do really appreciate that. So, for example, the Love Hypothesis, our female main character is demisexual. Written in the Stars is a sapphic romance. Boyfriend material is male-male or gay romance. The Charm Offensive is also male-male or gay romance. Delilah Green Doesn't Care is sapphic, specifically with a bi character here as well. Second Chances in Newport Stephen is a male-male romance, but also one of our main characters here is trans. Role-playing had a male-female relationship. However, our male main character is bi-romantic and demisexual. And also the Heartbreak Handshake by J.R. Hart. So we talked about the anxiety and the autistic representation, but also one of our main characters in the relationship is non-binary. Like, I just absolutely love the fact that we have so many books nowadays, so many romances that have these queer characters and combinations of queer characters and really I've been absolutely loving it. Like I will pick up these books for the tropes that are in them. Like this was like an almost like a time travel story, friends to lovers sort of thing. But also we then have queer characters. Like I just have absolutely been loving it. So those are the tropes and things that I love in romance books. If you guys have any romances to recommend me that fit any of these tropes, I would definitely take recommendations. My TBR is ever growing. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I do have videos coming out on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and sometimes Saturdays. So I will see you then. Bye.